Once you've built your real-time environment, it's time to expand your world further with some set dressing. In this quick tip from Unreal Environments instructor Joe Garth, learn how to quickly build a realistic set using Blender to add an extra bit of finesse to your scene. Unreal Environments is out now. Start learning today at LearnSquared.com. Now you've got a basic overview of the modeling process. You can go through and start modeling out individual props and assets. Here I'm making a little torch that I actually saw in the reference image. This thing is purely decorative. It's just something else to sort of fill in the scene. A really important prop was the barricade that's actually going to be used to block off the side of the building. And this actually I put through a few different redesigns until I was happy with something. So this is actually the very first sort of block out version. Uh, and I actually created a little torch that attaches like a sort of hanging wall light uh, that attaches to the side, uh, just like you can see in the reference image. In the end, I actually decided to simplify the design quite a lot and just make it a single block with two glass panes uh, that come out from either side. I think the glass actually works really well because you can actually see through it and see some of the really nice city behind it. I didn't want the barricades on the sides of the walls to uh, completely obstruct the uh, view of the city. And here I'm just tweaking a few of the material parameters. And the icing on the cake is this little emissive material that I added to the light uh, to really make it look much more like the reference. And uh, yeah, here you can see that that little glow, uh, it really adds a lot to uh, the realism. The next thing I wanted to create were these sort of wood chips that you can see on the sides in the reference image. To do that, I just created a long plane in Blender and then subdivided it. I then took a wood chips displacement texture and uh, used that to sort of displace the surface of the plane. I wasn't really trying to get individual wood chips to show in the model itself. I just wanted to create a nice sort of realistic noise. Once I imported it into the engine, I just placed it on the side. And then I went into the material editor and tweaked a bit of the tiling and the colors, uh, added the wood chips texture, and tried to sort of match it to the reference and uh, sort of eyeball the look. I had to also create a floor plane uh, like this one, which is just really just a cube that I've scaled up uh, and then added a uh, wood material instance to it and then just tweaked the tiling values on the texture. Here I'm just adjusting everything on the sides just to make sure everything lines up properly. I also wanted to add a few plants to the scene, uh, so I created this little cube-shaped uh, flower pot. It was a very simple model. Uh, and then I put uh, one of the juniper bushes from the forest pack uh, inside of the plant pot and sort of scaled it a little bit so that it fits. After that, I made a blueprint out of the two meshes so that I can always move uh, the blueprint around as one piece. And I made three different variations so that I've got lots of options later on. I've also got these nice hanging lights set up uh, that I modeled. They're very, very simple. It's just, uh, if I actually go in here and deconstruct this, uh, if we can just remove these modifiers. Uh, it's really just something like this. So it's basically just a little cube stretched out. And then there's another cube that I've deformed underneath that. And then if I zoom in on this part, you can see that I've just got two cubes with a bevel and and then I've got this little other cube that I've stretched out. So it's a really, really simple thing. And then what I do is I take an array modifier, put that on there, and then it basically duplicates that over and over again into the distance, uh, you know, all the way, all the way over there. And then what I do is actually use a Bezier curve uh, with the curve modifier uh, to create an actual curve to the whole thing. So let's put that on. And then it sort of curves it down like this. See, so yeah, it doesn't really cost a lot, but it really adds something to the scene, I think, uh, when you have these sort of overhanging uh, hanging lights. And if you check out my original reference, uh, you can see that these are really important to that one of those original reference images. With all of these assets, don't get intimidated by the complexity. A lot of them, when you break them down, are made from some very, very simple geometry. If I go in really close, you can see these are just like, this is a cube. This is a cube. This is a cube on top. Like, uh, this is a cylinder right here. The light itself is really simple too. It's it's literally just like some spheres <laughs> intersecting each other. So, you know, things can look complicated from a distance, but when you go in there and you break down what are they actually made of, what are the components that they're made of, um, you know, you can do an awful lot with just cubes, cylinders, uh, and uh, maybe the occasional sphere.